In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is Easter Monday. Let us consider the four qualities. There are others, but these are the four main qualities of the resurrected body. When our Lord rose from the dead, of course he was truly dead, and they mocked him and said, come down from the cross. If you do, we'll believe you. St. Jerome says, if our Lord did come down from the cross on Good Friday, would they have believed him? Maybe some would, maybe some wouldn't, most probably wouldn't. But St. Jerome said, he didn't come down from the cross, he did something greater. He would stay on the cross die on the cross, rigor mortis would set in, and his arms would be stiff, and his legs would be stiff, and that's how we would be placed in the arms of the Virgin Mary, and she would see all our work, all our sins, that what, what we've done to our dear God that loves us so much that he died for us to open heaven, to save us from hell, if we would only cooperate with him and love him above all things, because he wants our happiness. He made us for happiness. And that happiness will never be fulfilled here on earth completely, only in heaven. So this is why our Lord was dead and wounded and his soul was separated from the body. His soul went down into the limbo of the fathers to bring them great joy. And he stepped into the limbo of the fathers, busting open the gates like Samson busted open the gates of Gaza. And Christ stepped in, causing all of hell in the center of the earth to tremble. All the, de all the devils and the demons felt the presence of Christ the King. And he stepped into limbo as master of heaven and earth. And he filled limbo with the light of his divine person, with the Father and the Holy Ghost, giving them the beatific vision. He truly changed limbo into paradise. So, meanwhile, back in the tomb, our Lord's body was placed. It was quickly uh, washed with the tears of Our Lady. It was, it was quickly anointed very quickly by Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and St. John. And then St. John, and they all helped to, to wrap the body in the shroud. So his, his whole body was wrapped in the entire shroud, the huge cloth. Some have found on that cloth wine stains as, as at a dinner table, and some think it was the first altar cloth for the first mass. That they would have, someone would have ran, one of the apostles would have ran, maybe St. John, to the cynical, grabbed the altar cloth that was used for the first mass to wrap Christ's body with. They have found that on the shrouds, and that's a speculation. And it would actually make sense because the mass and Christ's his death are one one and the same. So our Lord is wrapped and he's then binded with many bandages all the way around and his head also. And then they roll the huge rock at the front of the tomb. So it's sealed and it's dark. And on top of that, the Romans and the, at the command of the chief priests, they, they chained the rock and they put a seal on it. No one was to come around there. No one was to open this tomb. And it was sealed by the Sanhedrin's seal. Because the Jews hated Christ so much. They, they weren't even happy that he was dead. They were still trying to stop him from rising from the dead. Because he said he would. And they knew it. So they did their best to stop it. So our Lord is truly dead in the tomb. He was truly buried from Friday around 5 p.m. until Easter morning, Sunday, Easter morning, around 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., his soul comes back from limbo. His soul is reunited to the body, and miraculously, all the wounds are cured. All the bruises, all the, the, the ripped muscles, the dislocated shoulder, all the torn up flesh, Everything was miraculously cured. All the blood that he lost was reinvigorated, resupplied. And he only kept the five scars of the hole in his hands, in his feet, and in his side. And then the body of our Lord rose up and filled the whole 
sepulchre with an immense light. And that light burned the image of Christ through the shroud. So our Lord's body, it's not like when we get up in the morning and get out of bed, we throw the sheets off and jump out of bed or crawl out. That wasn't the case. Christ's body passed through the cloth. And that's why on the, on the Shroud of Turin you have a 3D image. And the scientists say they're puzzled because the, the brightness took a voltage, a huge voltage of electricity or whatever the light was from coming from Christ's divine body. It burnt the image in without burning the cloth. And that's what's puzzling the scientists when they study the shroud. And it, but it was a real high voltage light, very high voltage. One of them even said enough voltage to supply a city with lights for several years. That's the power of light that emitted from Christ's resurrection. So our Lord passed through the shroud, leaving the cloth completely flat, just deflated. And then our Lord passed through the rock, like Samson Remember, they tried to seal the city with guards, and Samson came out in the middle of the night, and he walked up to the gate and just tore the huge metal gate with bars and bolts, just tore it right out, and carried this heavy gate all the way up the hill and threw it down in victory. In other words, you can't capture me, Samson said, and they never could ca capture Samson until they found out the secret of his hair, to cut his hair, then he became weak. So our Lord was made weak for us on the cross, like Samson. He was ridiculed like Samson, who was dressed in white, dressed in white and mockery of a psychiatric ward patient. And remember Samson in the basement of the Philistines' big building, they were celebrating, we caught the big Samson, we caught him finally. And they all celebrated the Philistines. So there, in that building there was several thousand people and the building had to be several stories high but the the basement of this building the, the foundation is still known today and you can still see the two pillars and that's when samson said bring me by the pillars and little did they know what would happen he grabbed the one pillar and he grabbed the other and he started shaking the entire building and all the building came crashing down killing Samson and killing several thousand Philistines in one, in one shot. St. Gregory the Great says this prefigures Christ who conquered the devil by taking up the two pillars, the two beams of the cross, carrying the cross to Mount Calvary, dying on it. And by his death, like Samson, by his death, he killed more than he did in his lifetime in any battles. By his death, Christ converted more than he did by the preaching of his lifetime. And so our Lord brought down the kingdom of the devil, and now the devil has no power over us unless we give in, unless we consent. We cannot sin mortally unless I want it. And then I turn my back on God and I go to some pleasure creature, whatever it is that, that uh, is disordered, that goes against the law of God. So we see our Lord when he rose from the dead, then the angel, he passed through the rock, then the angel picked up the rock and threw it down like a bowling ball, just threw it down and sat on it. And uh, St. Cyril and St. Augustine say he sat on it with, might, with mightiness and power, and he struck terror into the Roman soldiers that were there on guard. They were so scared, they were frozen, paralyzed with fear. And it, the angel was as if saying, says St. Cyril, come, go ahead, come and attack me. You make one move against me, and I will crush you like fleas. So remember, one angel wiped out 185,000 Assyrians in just a few seconds. Soldiers. So the, the Roman soldiers saw the angel. They didn't see Christ, but they saw the angel, and that's when they, the angel left, and when they recovered their senses, they ran to the chief priests and said, pay us the money, because we were on duty, <laughs> and nobody came to take the body. He's, the tomb is empty, and we have only one explanation. He rose from the dead. And the Jews said, shut up. We'll pay you extra money if you just say that while you were sleeping, the apostles came and took the body. 
And of course, that's a bad argument because Roman soldiers know if you fall asleep on the job, that's execution. If you're sleeping on, the, on watch, that's execution for a Roman soldier. They knew that. So many of those Roman soldiers later were baptized by the apostles. And Saint, one of them, for sure, St. Longinus, is a martyr and died a baptized Catholic, and he preached the Catholic faith. He was martyred in modern-day Turkey, near Cappadocia. So what do we see in our Lord? We see four outstanding qualities. One, clarity. And we will also have this when we rise from the dead, if we go to heaven. You, that is, the state of grace will shine through the body. So little, little uh, Sophia Philomena, she is just newly baptized. The state of grace, if you could see it, would, would blind your eyes. Your human physical eyes would be blinded by the light of the Blessed Trinity in, his, in her soul. But in the resurrected body, the clarity will shine through the body. The state of grace will shine through the body. And some saints will shine brighter than others. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, even the mouth will emit a sweetness, like you won't need Listerine in heaven. You're the, especially the mouth of like St. Anthony of Padua, St. Vincent Ferrer, St. Paul, those who were great preachers are those who taught others, or mothers who taught the sign of the cross to their children as little children who taught them the catechism on their knees. Their mouth will emit a, a fresh fragrance, a sweet smell, says St. Saint, Saint Thomas. And then the body will also shine. But we also know the body will also be able to appear and disappear. So in this gospel today, our Lord walked seven miles with the disciples of Emmaus. That is, they invite him to stay at the house for dinner and to stay overnight because he's traveling. And they don't know it's our Lord risen from the dead. But then they invite him to dinner and the family all comes around, all the kids, all the uncles, aunts, and all the mom and dad, and all the family comes to sit down. And our, they say, they say sir, sir, with mass, Rabbi, you know so much about the scriptures. Can you lead the prayers before the meal? And then our Lord reaches for the bread and they see the nail hole in his hands. And Cleophas and the others, the other one is believed to be St. Luke. They looked at each other and said, wait a minute. And they knew what that meant. And then he took the bread, blessed it with the sign of the cross, and broke it and vanished. Our Lord vanished right before their eyes. So they knew our Lord when he broke the bread. And when the priest breaks the consecrated host, we know and profess and adore that Christ is present in the Holy Eucharist by the words of the consecration and transubstantiation. So that's another quality of the resurrected body. You will be able to play hide and seek. You'll be able to appear or disappear at will to the physical eye. You'll always really be there substantially, but you'll be able to make the body disappear like our Lord disappeared and went another place. So that's one of the qualities of the body is clarity, the shining brightness Agility, which is you'll be able to move where you want. You'll be able to appear and disappear. You'll be able to move, not at the speed of thought, but you'll be able to move very fast and through the air. You won't need airplanes. You won't need wings. You won't need an elevator. You just go because the body will be subjected to the will and the soul will command the body. Here, the body commands the soul. If I want to go to the top, on top of the, the towers of Kansas City, well, I have to drive there, climb the steps, and go through the doors, and go through all that. But when you have the resurrected body, you just want to go, and you just go. Right through the material walls, right through the doors, right through everything. So, um, that is, when we know this, why? Because Christ, at his ascension, he didn't need a... A, a, an air balloon, he didn't need a helicopter, by his own power ascended into heaven. They watched his body just ascend and all the way up. So that tells us the body, the quality will have agility. You'll be able to fly where you want. You'll be able, you'll be able to do dive of, dives off of cliffs, do perfect flips and do a perfect dive 500 feet off from the, <laughs> from the uh, cliffs if you want. 
Or if you just want to stop one foot above the water or two inches, you just plop in the water. You'd be able to have that control over your body. That's called the gift of agility. And you'll be able to do backflips. You'll be able to do everything you want. Imagine, and I, you know, heaven isn't boring. If God's creatures on earth play like dolphins, do jumps in the water and schools of fish do all these, these coordinated swimming and turn right together and turn left together. And it's wonderful to see our flocks of birds dance in the air. Heaven will not be boring either because we're going to, the saints will have physical bodies. So I, I'm open to any criticism from good theologians on this point, but I, I'm, I don't think it's frivolous to say in heaven you'll be able to play many games, hide and seek games, you'll be playing hockey games, football games, you'll be able to play basketball games, but you'll have to make rules. You know, you're not allowed to disappear during this game. You're not allowed to, um, you know, throw the ball at 100 miles an hour, something like that. But you won't, make, you won't break bones. You'll never get sick. You'll never get old. You'll never get a headache. You'll never need to sleep. And you won't even need to eat to live. But there will be a certain eating, as Christ said, you won't, I won't drink of the fruit of the vine until you're with me in my Father's kingdom. So there will be some social eating and drinking in heaven. We know that, but you won't need to. And then we see in our Lord the gift of subtlety that he walked through the walls when he visited the apostles on Easter day. He walked through the walls. He didn't knock at the door. He walked right through the wall and it scared them. <laughs> it scared them because imagine, you know, someone walking right through this wall instead of coming through the door. But that's what happened. And our Lord showed them his wounds. So that gift of subtlety means you can pass through matter. So on the new earth, after the end of the world, and the whole earth is purged by fire, as high as Noah's flood reached over the mountains, so St. Peter, the, our first pope, says the fires will pur purge the earth, and there will be a new earth which will be more beautiful than it is ever was. And on this new earth, you won't need tunnels through mountains, you won't need airplanes, you won't need cars, you just float, you just fly and pass through matter. And then uh, that's called the gift of subtlety, passing through matter. And our Lord passed through the walls, he also passed through the womb of his virgin mother when he was born, miraculously. So her virginity was intact. And then the last um, gift of the quality of the resurrected body that our Lord had is called impassibility. Impassibility, that means they could try to kill him, but they couldn't kill him. They could, they could cut him up with knives, but it, the knife would just break. That's called the gift of impassibility. That means you will never get sick. You'll never um, get old. You'll always be youthful at the age of 30, says St. Thomas in heaven. The saints will always be beautiful, handsome, strong, healthy, vigorous, never boring, never dull. The joy of heaven and to see the Blessed Trinity is the main joy, but also the friendship of all the other saints. You're going to meet all the saints down history. Sebastian will meet St. Sebastian. And ask him, you'll see the light of arrow when he was shot with arrows, that, that will, he'll have a special light flowing from all his holes. Because the way you were martyred will give a special shine in heaven. So, impassibility means you'll never break bones, you'll never catch a cold, you'll never get cancer, or you'll never have a heart attack. So forever the body will be strong and vigorous. And never an end to the joy of heaven. There'll never be a boring moment in heaven either. You know, scoffers like to say, oh, heaven will just be boring, sitting on a cloud playing a, playing a harp all day. That's just stupid. It's just dumb. That's dumb talk. Because uh, St. Paul says, I has not seen, nor has any ear ever heard, nor can man's imagination comprehend the joy that God has prepared for those who love him. So the joy of, uh, of heaven is why our Lord did all this, die on the cross and show us 
in his body the qualities that he prepares for your resurrected body when we rise from the dead. For those who go to hell, they will have a perfect body. It'll be at age 30. But the ugliness of their soul will, sh will show through the face. So if you've ever seen someone, you know, on the verge of suicide and really depressed, they look, they look very sad. They look very miserable. Or someone who's angry, the, their face turns red and their veins pop out and they, their eyes are squinting, their teeth are grit. So the soul shows through the body, even now, in a way. But then the damned, their, their despair would be shown in their screams and in their horrors on the day of judgment. And the damned forever, their bodies will burn with their soul in hell. So the fire will burn not only the outside of their body, but on the inside. Their esophagus, their bloodstream, their spleen, their liver, their heart, their lungs will just be boiling hot always, inside and out. And the worst of the pains in hell is, I have lost God. I've lost my supreme happiness. So we never want to go there. That's why Our Lady told us to pray at, when we pray the rosary at every decade. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Who's most in need of his mercy? We are, uh, us poor sinners. We need his help and his mercy. So these are the four qualities of the resurrected body. The clarity, the shining, Agility, you move where you want, as the speed, very fast. Uh, subtlety, you'll be able to pass through material matter. And uh, fourth, impassibility, you'll never get sick, die, break a leg, or anything like that. Always. And this is what people look for on this earth, right? They want to be young forever. They want to be healthy. They want to, they want to have security. And these are all good things, but we know we're going to lose it all. We're all going to die. We're going to lose whatever we have, and we're going to go with our soul judged by God. But our Lord will give all that if we love him. He's going to give you all the security. You'll never be af afraid of losing the happiness of heaven, ever. And you'll be healthy and strong forever. And girls, you'll be stunningly beautiful forever. And any defects now will be gone. If, if someone was born with seven toes, they'll have five on the resurrected body. If they were born partly blind or deaf, They'll have perfect hearing and perfect vision. So these are just some of the things that, that, that God has prepared for those who love him. And that's nothing compared to the real joys, which is to see God himself. Which joy, I ask through the Paschal and, and Easter graces that you obtain by daily devotion to the Virgin Mary. Pray her rosary every day, love her every day, grow close to the Virgin Mary, because anyone who draws near to her, she takes them right to her son. It's the direct highway to the heart of Jesus is the heart of Mary. You can't go wrong when you love Our Lady. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, and for those who do not have recourse to thee especially, all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church, Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen.